Tēnā tātou kato. Ko Yanisha ve tōku ingo. Ko papa mo tōku whenua kura. Ko mawau te monga. Ko tōronga te moana no oto tahi aho. Kia ora and welcome to the sorted webinar. My name is Yanisha. I'm your kai whakahari, your facilitator for today. I love seeing all the different places where people are joining us from today. As you can see from my um, my short mihi here, I'm from the North Island, but I'm living here in the South Island in Christchurch and have been here for. I think about 14 years now. I'm actually not too sure. Time flies when you're having fun. So thanks for hopping into the chat and just letting me know where you're from. I hope everybody else can see that as well. Just to let you know, this session is being recorded. Now, this is important so that you can watch this again at your pleasure. Uh, these webinars will be placed onto the YouTube link under the sorted uh, YouTube account and you can see that later on. So you can watch it again as you wish. And anybody who wasn't able to make it today can go and watch this recording as well. We won't use the recordings for any other uh, purposes. And if you don't wish to be recorded, feel free to leave the call. But please, let, uh, please know that your video cameras are off, and your microphones are off. So you can just see me and the slides so you are pretty safe here today. So... It's a real pleasure to have you here with us. It's great that you've been able to join us during this sorted money month. During the month of August, we've been encouraging you to hit pause and take a moment to get your money sorted. This is actually the fourth and final webinar in our Tuesday lunchtime series. So hands up if anyone's been to um, all four of our webinars that we've put together. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Quite a few hands are being raised here. That's fantastic. So you've gone through that whole suite of webinars with us. Um, and yeah, that's awesome. If you haven't, as I said, you can go back and look at the YouTube link and see what um, see the previous webinars and you can catch up from there as well. So yeah, very good. I'm very impressed. Well done. Hands up if this is your first webinar for today, uh, for the series. We've also got some new people, lots of new people on here as well. So kia ora and welcome. It's a real pleasure to have you here with us. Who is Sorted? So Sorted provides free, independent and impartial information around all things money matters. Sorted is run by Te Ara Ahunga Ora, the Retirement Commission. And the Retirement Commission aims to empower the people of Aotearoa on their journeys to a better retirement by helping them understand money. What I love about what the Retirement Commission does and what Sorted does is they help people on their journey from as young as five years old all the way up to 105. So no matter where you are on your on your money journey, you can hop onto this website and you can find things that fit your life stage. So yes, that includes children. There are some um, fantastic resources on, there, resources on there under the Sorted in Schools, which I would encourage you to have a wee look at as well, all the way up to different life stages that we might find ourselves in as we journey through. And I will introduce you to a few of these tools uh, today as well. During these webinars and any seminars provided by Sorted, we can't give you any specific financial advice, but what we will do is give you some great resources that you can use to make more informed financial decisions. It's really important to me, and I can see a number of people on the line who are also financial advisors and professionals. So it's really important that we stick to general advice here today only. And you will be tempted to ask some very specific questions and I might be tempted to try and answer them, but we'll stick in that general lane. And that's really important for me. My background is I'm a chartered accountant. I'm actually an ex-auditor. So if you know any auditors or know anyone in that in industry, you know that we're very nosy. We love systems and controls. So ex-auditor, so I've left that side of me behind, but now I'm sitting as an associate financial advisor, which I absolutely love. And it's built upon the work that I've done as a financial mentor in that space for about a decade as well. I've actually been a sort of facilitator for nearly a decade too. So it's fair to say I've had a few different hats in this industry. And today I'm sitting very firmly in the mentoring and facilitator space of general advice only. But please do ask questions. We have lots of people on the line who might be able to offer some help and some tips and tricks as well. So that's really, really good. And before we go any further, I would just like to say a short karakia. If you've been to uh, one of our webinars before, you'll be familiar with this and the translation is just there on the screen for you as well. Tuya e runga, tuya e raro, tuya e roto, tuya e waho, tuya ki te ara ahunga ora, ki a whaihua, ki a ora. Homie, tuye, taikie.
So what are we looking at today in this last webinar that we have together? We're looking at KiwiSaver. Particularly, we'll be looking at busting some myth, uh, myths, so doing some myth busting, looking at some tips and some tricks around how to use your KiwiSaver, and also how to cope with the investing roller coaster that comes with being involved with something like KiwiSaver. So that's essentially where we're going with today. We have a lot of numbers to work with, so I would highly recommend that you grab yourself a pen and paper and you write some of these things down. Maybe even if you can, have a second screen open and have, have the sorted website there for you so you can have a play with some of the calculators as we go. I'm pretty sure you guys are all very familiar with the Zoom functions that we have available, so please use them all. We have the chat screen, which I said I've got up open on my second screen, and I actually have Natalie here with me from the Retirement Commission who will help keep an eye on the chat as well. So please ask any questions that you like. We'll keep um, our eye on that. And also, please use the reaction buttons. I see a fair few of you are using them already. Um, I love seeing your reactions come up. It just it makes up for the fact that I can't see your faces. So please use those reactions as we go along. OK, let's start off with a quick quiz. Let's bust a few myths here. Let's just see where we're at when it comes to KiwiSaver. First question here, true or false? Hop into the chat and just let me know. People over 18 who start a new job will be automatically enrolled in KiwiSaver. True or false? What do we think? All right, we have a real range of answers coming into the chat. Let's see where we're at. The answer is true. So people aged 18 or over who start a new job will be automatically enrolled in KiwiSaver. There are some exceptions, and these are listed on the Inland Revenues website. If you go to kiwisaver.govt.nz, you can find out a little bit more about that. And if you decide to opt out of KiwiSaver, within, um, then you have to do that within eight weeks of starting a new job, provided that you haven't permanently joined a KiwiSaver scheme previously. So there are a few caveats, a few rules around this, and the exceptions are listed on the IRD website. Work visas, that's a good one to check out on the IRD's website as well, because there are some exceptions around that too. It's not my particular area of expertise when it comes to work visas, so I would strongly suggest you head to the IRD's website, kiwisaver.govt.nz, to find out if one of those exceptions are for you. But generally, people aged 18 or over who start a new job will be automatically enrolled in KiwiSaver and they have eight weeks in order to opt out if that's what they choose to do. Second question, true or false, employers contribute a minimum of 3% of employees' pay to KiwiSaver. They may contribute more. What do we think, true or false? Watching the answers come through. We seem to be all on the same line here. The answer is true, correct, and also a little false because it's not quite 3%. You may have looked at your payroll payslip before and thought that doesn't actually equal 3%. I see my contribution and the employers are slightly different. And it's uh, the reason that it's different is because there's a tax on there called the Employer Superannuation Contribution Tax or ESCT that might get taken off it. Some employers will um, do their contribution plus that, some will do minus that. So it all depends on what is written into your contract. So if it's a little less than 3%, That'll be why it's not GST, it's the ESCT, Employer Superannuation Contribution Tax. So the answer is true and false. Next question. You can choose your own KiwiSaver provider, true or false? See the answers coming through there. There was a quick comment about whether or not the ta that tax goes into the government pot. All the taxes go into the government pot and then get redistributed back out again. So there's a whole bunch of information about how our taxes are used on the government's website. If you're ever interested, there's a fantastic pie chart around that if you want to have a look. But this one here, you can choose your own KiwiSaver provider, true or false. And I think we are almost unanimous with that one. And the answer is, of course, true. So some employers have a chosen KiwiSaver provider that they prefer to use. And if you're an employee with one of those firms, you can choose to go with them or you can choose somebody else as well. So there are currently 32 different KiwiSaver providers available for us. 32 different ones. It's a lot to choose from. If you go onto the, uh, the IRD website, so irg.govt.nz, you can find a whole list of the different KiwiSaver providers but you've got a fair amount there to go through if you want. 
Employees who haven't chosen a provider in three months after starting their new job will be enrolled into one of the IRD's default schemes. So that's a, spe a special group of um, KiwiSaver providers that have been chosen. We currently have six default providers. These ones are Booster, BNZ, Kiwi Wealth, which is now Fisher Funds, Westpac, Simplicity, and Superlife, which is also Smart Shares. So those are our six current default providers that we have. So if you don't choose on your own, you'll be put into one of these funds and they've been specifically selected. They have met a, a bunch of different criteria and you may notice that this has changed over the years as well. So we used to have ANZ, ASB, AMP um, and MRSA in that mix and they are now no longer default providers, but the others are. Back in 2021, we also had a few other changes that came into uh, play with our default funds. And one of the ones I really love is the change in investment mix. So instead of the default fund being a conservative setting, uh, now our default funds are a balanced investment mix, which is still not perfect in my opinion, but it's better. So we're getting a little bit better there as well. A few other changes around uh, 2021 included um, what our default funds were invested in. So they exclude fossil fuels, illegal weapons, and they are more involved with responsible investment policy. So if that's interesting to you, then you can find out a little bit more about that with your KiwiSaver provider. So you have 32 different KiwiSaver providers to choose from. And if you break that down even more, there are a lot of funds as well. So we won't go into that one um, today, but there's a lot to choose from. 61% of 18 to 64 year olds are making contributions to their KiwiSaver. So that's a really good encouragement for us to get amongst this retirement savings scheme. It is way more common than you might think. KiwiSaver is a great retirement investment tool. You have the flexibility to choose and change your provider and there are a range of different fund types available from conservative to growth to extra growth um, and regressive types of funds as well that you can choose to match your investment time frame and your investment risk appetite. In addition to that, with KiwiSaver, we get given free money. So if you contribute a minimum of $1,043 during the year, which is about $20 a week, the government will give you $521. So if you're working for an employer, you'll also be getting an extra 3% of your pay as well. So that is more than just your money, it is the your employer's money and your government's money as well. So that's an extra bonus for being part of KiwiSaver there. Would have thought it might have been more than 61%. Uh, that's people who are enrolled and making contributions. So there may be more people who are enrolled but not making contributions as well. But we would love to see that number more. I agree. That would be fantastic. So let's remind ourselves about how KiwiSaver works. If we're employed, we can choose to set aside either 3, 4, 6, 8 or 10% of our pay. So for many, this makes it a really easy way for us to get involved because it comes directly out of our pay. You can actually choose to put in more than that if you like. So if you decide to put in 12%, then that is possible too. You could talk to your HR department or you can choose to make a voluntary uh, contribution out of your bank account. As I mentioned, employers also put in 3% into our KiwiSaver. And even if we're self-employed or not working, we can contribute to our KiwiSaver and it can be any amount that you choose. So whether it's a regular 3% or $20 per week, so you get that minimum amount, then you can do that. And if we contribute, then the government will contribute as well. So it's basically 50 cents for every dollar we put in up to a maximum of $521 each year. All of this money goes into our own KiwiSaver accounts, which are investment accounts, and these stay with us no matter where we work. So they don't stay with our workplace, they stay with us. They are our funds, they belong to us. And if in the, in the event that you pass, then it will go to your estate. So that's a whole other webinar around estate planning and stuff, but it does fall to you or your estate. Um, KiwiSaver is run by a KiwiSaver provider, so your whichever one you are choosing of those 32 that we have, and you get to decide who that is. Just like you get to decide which bank you belong to, you can choose which KiwiSaver provider you work with as well. Within those providers, there are fund managers, and they're the ones who actually work around investing your money. And they invest the money in the managed fund that holds certain assets like cash, bonds, property, or shares. The mix of that will depend on what sort of fund that you have um, decided to go with and 
depending on what that particular fund manager or KiwiSaver provider is working around. That's where you get to really choose as well. So you can find out more about that sort of information in the product disclosure statements, which you can get from your KiwiSaver provider. These investments earn us returns through income or interest or growth. So that's how we earn, um, earn returns with, with these investments. You can have access to your KiwiSaver funds at 65 or earlier if you're using it for a first home withdrawal. When you access your KiwiSaver funds at 60, 65, you can use it to take a regular income to top up your NZ Super. So your KiwiSaver is on top of your NZ Super. Or you could use it to withdraw lump sums as needed. And contrary to popular belief, you don't have to withdraw all of your KiwiSaver funds when you turn 65. You don't have to take it all out and put it in the bank. You can stay invested all throughout your retirement, which could be up to 30 years. So you might leave it in your KiwiSaver fund if you choose, or you might decide to move it to another sort of managed fund that better suits your needs. Because there are a variety of fund types and funds out there, finding the right one for us is one of the most important things we can do to get the best results for our KiwiSaver. Just going to have a little look and see what questions we have in the chat there. Um, how does KiwiSaver work for the self-employed? So if you are self-employed, you choose to put in your KiwiSaver, but you won't get the employer contribution because you are the employer. So you can work around that and decide to give yourself 6% of your pay, so which is 3% plus what would have been the 3% of the employer, and you'll still get the government contribution there as well. Does the government contribute after we reach 65? The government does not currently contribute after 65, but your employer may choose to. It depends on their um, on their personal policies and what they decide to do. So now currently it does not because at 65 you can start to withdraw those funds. So that's uh, for retirement, and so that's where we start to use it there. Great questions. Thank you. So let's have a look at the four ways that money can flow into our KiwiSaver. So I've mentioned the different types of money, how we can put money in, how the, our employer puts money in, how the government puts money in, and then we also earn returns. So this graph that we're looking here is for someone's um, entire KiwiSaver experience from the age of 18 up to 65. This example is of somebody who's starting out on a salary of around about $35,000, which grows every year and they contribute the minimum of 3% to their salary. So they're not doing anything extra, nothing too flash going on there. They are on a growth KiwiSaver strategy all the way from 18 to 65. So we've kept, the, uh, kept things pretty, pretty simple for this um, graph here. At the end of their 47 years, they would have close to $279,000. And this would have come from four different directions into their KiwiSaver account. So the first place, so starting at the bottom there, you've got your, their contributions. So this 18 per, this person is about $69,450 that they would have contributed. Their employer, because it's 3% less that tax, is about $57,300. The government would have contributed $15,780,000. And then their investment returns from the market would be $136,000 yeah $136,500. These numbers here are including the effect of fees, tax and inflation. So we are looking at the future dollars, which is the uh, future purchasing power of our of our money there. So that can gives you the uh, that $279,000 that you might have in your KiwiSaver if you were an 18 year old investing for 47 years, starting at $35,000, growing through your career on a growth strategy with a minimum contribution. What makes these types of funds grow so much is the effect of compound interest. This is when the returns on our investments stay in our funds and they earn even more returns for us over time. It supercharges our savings. I wanna take you through using the calculator for this one so we can see just how that works. It's a good question there. It's asking um, what is the recommended amount to have for retirement? If you go into the sort of website, we have an amazing resource around retirement income. We're not covering that in today's webinar, but there is some really good information there based on the Massey University's retirement expenditure guidelines to give you an idea of how much you might need for retirement based on the current average retiree situation today. 
So a really great study if you're into that sort of stuff. It breaks it down into how much you need for KiwiSaver and how much you might um, get from superannuation as well. So Massey University Retirement Expenditure Guidelines is a great place to start there. Another question, is there a cap on how many voluntary contributions you can make? Not that I'm aware of. You can make as many contributions as you like. And when I withdraw my money at 65, will I be taxed? No, because it was already taxed when it went in. So the money that you withdraw is tax free. So hopefully that answers a few of your questions there. Thank you for those questions. I appreciate them coming through. Alrighty, let's have a look at the KiwiSaver calculator. There's a few great calculators on the website that I love to use. And this is probably one of them. And we're using the KiwiSaver calculator. I had it loaded up before. Here we go. So when it comes to the KiwiSaver calculator, you can choose whether you are planning for your first time or for retirement. But to, uh, for these purposes, we will look at planning for retirement. And I click. But I clicked that. That one is going slow. Oh, I see. Sorry, I actually have my chat screen in the way, <laughs> which is why I couldn't see it. And it's moving super slow, so I didn't notice it. Notice it. Okay, here we go. So if we put in the example we were talking about before, aiming for 65 and we have an 18-year-old employed earning 35000 a year. And we go next. We'll assume that their KiwiSaver balance is starting at zero and we said they were on a growth fund. Um, can I just get a hand, thumbs up that you guys can see this and I'm not just playing and talking to myself with this one? Excellent. Thank you for that. So they contribute 3%. Our employer also is contributing 3%. Let's see what the results are. Remember, we were looking at around about $279,000. Not too bad with the rounding. So there we go. Now this is adjusted for inflation. You've got the option there to adjust for inflation. So I can take that off and that will give us the today dollars, which always looks better. Look at that, 702,000. But if we want to look at what the purchasing power will be, we turn inflation on, which does make it look a little, a little less, um, but that's just to give you an idea of how much things would be. You can change all the different th um, parameters. So you can change the fund type, you can change your contribution and see what would happen if that was the case. If we shortened the length of time that we invested, so let's say we aren't 18, we are in fact, let's see if, um, change it here. Should we change our details? Employed. Oh, sorry, there it is, 18. If I want to change it to, say, let's start at 30 years old and let's change our salary a little bit as well. 50, it's not weekly, it's just the frequency of pay, annual salary, and see what happens there. So now, instead of $279,000, we would have $205,000 in our KiwiSaver. So it's around a 74-ish thousand dollar difference. Time really matters when it comes to our KiwiSaver. The longer that we're in KiwiSaver, the more we get the benefit of compound interest over time. We can achieve a lot with KiwiSaver, and if you know any 18-year-olds, encourage them to start sooner because there is a real cost to delaying. And KiwiSaver is one of those investments that we do actually have a lot of control over. So you can work out how much your KiwiSaver fund might end up being. I just check the chat and see if I lost anybody along the way. Um, contributions need to be in before the 27th of June and if you're already with a KiwiSaver provider they will also send out um, reminders or uh, email to remind you to get your contributions in as well um, if I sign my child up to KiwiSaver in the future he hits university wants to focus on paying fees uh, can he opt out of KiwiSaver if, that, if you've signed your child up into KiwiSaver and they start working um, then I don't think they'll be able to opt out because they're already being opted in by yourself. So that's a, that's a consideration to think about when signing your children up for KiwiSaver um, and what the impact will be for them. 
children can have KiwiSaver. They don't have to. They could have a managed fund instead, which is very similar to KiwiSaver. And there are no government contributions for under 18-year-olds as well. How much inflation is used in the cal calculator? Very good question. I think it is sitting around about 3% at the moment. But in the calculator, there is a little question icon. You can go into there and actually read what the background, um, uh, well, all the background information around the calculations as well. We perhaps could have adjusted it based on current inflation, but we left it as is because we hope that it's going to come back down to within the RBNZ's um, sort of percentages there between 2 and 3%. So that's what it is currently. Can you pause contributions? Yes, you can. And you, so you can take a um, contribution suspension, and that is also built into the KiwiSaver calculator. So you can use that and actually see what the effect of your pause will be on your overall total. So you can see how long you can afford to take that, that break, that pause on your contributions. So there's a really, really great tool that you can use to see what your future might look like with KiwiSaver based on where you're at and where you're going as well. So you could give yourself a quick win today by thinking about whether or not you can currently contribute extra with your KiwiSaver. Can you bump up your contributions to 4%? Maybe you can't go 6%, but you could go 5%. You can do that. So you could do a 4% a, a and a voluntary 1% contribution, either from payroll or from your own bank account. And then you could really start to see the benefit of that within your KiwiSaver. A few other questions. Could students pause, uh, press pause on contributions? Yes, they could. But only for a period of time. So it's not forever. So yeah, just check that one out as well. Doesn't sound very promising to start KiwiSaver at 30. I'm not sure about that. I don't know, I mean, $200,000 in your KiwiSaver adjusted for inflation, so that's the future dollars, would be a huge amount to add towards your uh, superannuation. So have a look at that Massey University um, research and see what it is, but 200 could give you a really good bump, uh, more than you might even realise. And that is also starting at a 3% contribution. At 30 years old, maybe you could be contributing even more. So think, uh, have a play with that one as well. It's never too late to start because it's always going to compound. And don't forget, once you hit 65, you're not suddenly stopping being, a, um, being an investor. You can still be investing over the next 30 years as well. So it's more than 65 years old. It keeps on going. So don't be discouraged by, at all means. One of the other benefits to um, KiwiSaver aside from retirement is being able to use our funds for a first home deposit. So to give me a break from talking, I'm going to pass it on to, this, uh, to the video and you can just have a little listen here about how KiwiSaver can be used for your first home deposit. $20,000. That is great for fun. Did you know you can use your KiwiSaver for your first whare? You can use it for your whole deposit or as part of it. And you might even be able to get a first home grant. Yeah, KiwiSaver is a great way to help you save money for your first home. The first thing you'll need to make sure of is that you're eligible to use your KiwiSaver as a first home deposit. You'll need to have been a member for over three years to use it. You have to live in the whare you're buying and you'll need to leave $1,000 in your KiwiSaver. Through KiwiSaver, you could even get a first home grant. That's up to $5,000 towards an existing home or up to $10,000 for a newly built home. So that's even more reason to use your KiwiSaver to help you get into your own place. And if you're buying a whare with someone else, you could both get the grant. So that's up to $20,000. That is great for Fano investing together. You'll want to know how much money you're on track to have for your first home. Check out the sorted KiwiSaver calculator. Plus, it'll show you what a difference it might make if you increase your contributions. You can also get your KiwiSaver working harder for you and help you save even more by making sure your KiwiSaver settings are right for your house buying goal. Look at your contributions. You can increase your deposit by making the most out of your employer, government, and your own contributions. If you put in 3% of your pay, your employer matches that with another 3% before tax. The government will also contribute up to $521 each year. 
you can decide to put in more, like four, six, eight, or even 10% of your salary. Or you can also make voluntary contributions as much as you want. The more you can contribute, the larger your first home deposit will be. Check that the type of fund you're in is aligned to your goals. If you're planning to use your KiwiSaver balance in the next three years for your first home, it may be worth sticking to a more conservative fund, as you don't have time to ride the ups and downs of the market. You can change it to a growth fund after you've bought your whare. Check out Sorted's KiwiSaver Fund Finder if you need help. As soon as you've made the decision to withdraw your KiwiSaver, change to a defensive fund to protect your deposit. This will make sure there are no losses to your deposit, so the money is there to buy your whare. And on that note, you'll need to give your provider plenty of notice as this process can take a while. That's how to use KiwiSaver for a first home deposit. Check if you're eligible, find out how much your deposit could be, make the most out of your contributions, and protect your savings when you've made the decision to go for it. Good luck. Alrighty. See a few questions on the chat there. So let's have a quick run through with the questions we have coming through. Um, <laughs> you guys keep chatting, so it's hard to keep up. So somebody just commented about starting at 53, really regretted. Hindsight is a wonderful thing, but it's I've started saving 10%. It's looking very healthy now. So well done for starting and just really trying to just go hard at it now. How do we check what type of fund we're contributing to? So if you're already with KiwiSaver, you should be able to see it on maybe their app or your website or one of the statements that they've given you. If it's not clear, just give them a ring. Ring them up and ask them, what sort of fund am I in? They'll want your member number. They'll ask you a few ID questions, but you can find out that way. But hopefully on, the, on your app or maybe their website or on a statement that you would have received recently as well. A question around moving countries, e.g. from Australia to New Zealand, should you transfer your super? I would suggest that you talk to a financial advisor around that one, that one specifically somebody who's experienced in transferring um, in, uh, Australian super over to New Zealand because there are a few things around timing that is really important to get right. So, um, so talk to a financial advisor around that one. I will give you some links to where you can find people at the end of today's webinar. How do you know what KiwiSaver is best? Well, that's um, a whole big question altogether because my best will be different to your best. It depends on whether you're socially responsible or not and all sorts of other things. So um, that's a very big question and we'll try our best to help you with um, getting to that one today. Can you use KiwiSaver for a home that isn't your partner's first home? I believe it's to do with whether or not it's your first home. So you're, you might still be able to access what was talked about on the on the video there, but your partner may not unless they are in a position of being like a first-home buyer, which is another um, different area that you can get into. So you can still uh, use it, but perhaps your partner cannot. Can employers con contribute less than 3%? Yes, if there was the tax that's taken off the employer superannuation contribution tax, then it will be less than 3%, um, but otherwise it is 3%. It can be more. Does the amount the government contribute depend on our contribution at each year or is it fixed? It, it's 50 cents to every dollar that you contribute. So if you put in the minimum of $20 a week, then you will get the full $521 from the government. If you put in less, then you will get in less as well. Excellent. Very good. And somebody who is 18 and contributing 10%, um, if you start off contributing 10% and don't know what it's like to contribute exactly if you don't if you start off contributing more at say 10% you'll never know the difference so if I had benefit of hindsight if I could go back to being 18 20 years old and and had something like KiwiSaver available to us which didn't exist um, then then it would be amazing probably the smartest thing I've ever done for myself is I always make um yeah I can always make it work very good excellent to see all that there so if you are looking for KiwiSaver for your first home, then the best website to have a look at is actually Kainga Order, and they will break down whether or not your what the eligibility criteria are. So um, the video mentions having different eligibility criteria, and that depends on whether you've been contributing, um, your age, your income, and a bunch of other things as well. So definitely hop onto Kainga Order to work to just check the different 
um, eligibility criteria there as well. But the first home grant is fantastic because that means that you could get an extra $5,000 towards an older home, older or existing home, or an extra $10,000 towards a newly built home. Add that with your uh, KiwiSaver withdrawal that you're able to take out of your KiwiSaver could really bump up your KiwiSaver, your first home deposit. You might also qualify for a first home or a welcome home loan, which means pulling together a deposit of less than 20%. So now you've got even less that you need to try and pull together and you've got all these different places you can pull the money from. So it's a great opportunity for us to use KiwiSaver if that is what we, um, we're looking for. Sorted has a great guide to recap this video. So if you go onto the Sorted website um, and search up how KiwiSaver can help you get into your first home or just first home, then you'll find this video again that you can watch and also a little bit more information linking to the Kind of Order website. And you can use the sort of calculator to see what the effect is of withdrawing that deposit for your first home. So just to give you a little bit of an idea, I'm not going to pull up the calculator again, but if we used our 18-year-old's example and say they wanted to buy a home in 10 years, so based on what we put in before, they would have saved up $33,000 um, that would be available for a deposit. They still have to leave $1,000 in their account. Their balance then at 65 provided nothing else changes, so they don't increase their payments beyond 3% and they keep it on growth, then they would have $200,000 at 65 instead of $279,000 that they might have had without the withdrawal. So there is a significant effect on our KiwiSaver balance if we do take out that withdrawal, but withdrawing it earlier gives you a chance to build it back up. Just like was mentioned in the chat, we could bump up our KiwiSaver contributions. But also you've got the benefit of having your KiwiSaver and also your first home. So there is a definite benefit there as well. A quick comment on um, moving your funds to defensive. Now, if you're in a position where you are not withdrawing your full amount of your KiwiSaver for your first home deposit, then you don't need to move all of your funds to a more defensive fund, just the portion that you're looking to withdraw for your for your first home withdrawal for your deposit. Because you don't need to have the rest of it moving defensive, just the portion you want to withdraw. You want that to stay pretty stable. So move that one there and leave the rest in the original fund type, whether it's balanced growth or whatever that might be. All good. So have a look at the guide on, on Sorted for a little bit more information around that one if that's how you would like to use your KiwiSaver. Good. Okay, so those are some of the ways in which KiwiSaver can work for you, but we also need to think about how to pick the right fund for us. And there have been a few other a few questions coming through on the chat around that one as well. And there are essentially three different areas that we need to look at when considering the right type of fund for us. So there are five different types of funds essentially available. We've got defensive, conservative, balanced growth, and aggressive. And there are different variations of some of these as well. So there are um, super aggressive kind of funds out there as well, which are quite interesting to have a look at if you're keen on it. The first thing to notice about this um, slide is you've got this dial at the top, which shows the overall level of risk involved with these different fund types. So defensive has a low level risk all the way up to aggressive, which is on the other side of the scale there. The next thing we look at is volatility. So that's basically your tolerance to the roller coaster of investing. If you don't want the likely ups and downs, you want a pretty steady growth, not, not, not a steep growth, it's not going to be steep because with steep comes roller coaster, then you're looking at more defensive or conservative. If you're happy with the ups and downs of the roller coaster, then aggressive is going to show that with you. So there will be the likelihood of many ups and downs along the way, and time is um, essence with that one. So time is that last one there. If you're in a short time frame, then you don't want your funds to go up and down. You want that the potential returns to be pretty sure. They're not going to be massive, but they're going to be sure. So you want have that shorter time frame, and you're looking at more of a conservative, a defensible conservative approach. If you've got more time on your hands, more time in investing, then you can you can experience the ups and downs, the volatility of investing with the potential of greater returns. So that's where the aggressive style fits in there as well. So we've, we're constantly balancing risk versus the likely ups and downs and the potential returns that we want versus how much time we have to invest. A lot of it comes down to time and how you feel around risk. 
Research shows us that women tend to choose a lower risk investment and appear to have on average a lower KiwiSaver balance. And 30% of women don't know what type of fund type they're in compared to men. So make sure if you don't know, you find out as a result of today's webinar, what sort of fund you're in. So we can change these numbers up a little bit there. But women are good investors. So there's a lot of research out there that show that women, once we are involved in, invest in investing, we make a plan and we stick to it and we have really good results. So as opposed to men who like to try and play the, the game a little bit more and the results aren't always as good. So there is interesting research out there if you're, um, if you're into that sort of thing. Let's see what questions we have going on here. Mm. I'm missing a few, let's see. Super, got that one, 10%. Uh, a question about fees, we'll have a look at fees um, a little bit sooner as well. Are KiwiSaver management fees proportional or to how much you have in there or are they fixed? They can vary. Some of them are percentage and some of them are fixed. So it's important to know which one your fund is um, charging you there. How do you know if you have the correct PIR rate? So best idea to go on to the IRD's website and just check what, um, just follow through their flowchart and see what it is. It's not not too much of a flowchart. There's only about three different levels there. Does the home starter grant come from the government? I believe so. And how frequently can you switch funds without taking into consideration the switching costs? There's more than just the cost when it comes to switching and we'll talk about that very soon. Should I keep it uh, keep my fund aggressive until the point that I want to withdraw, um, or should you change to conservative one to three years prior to withdrawing? Um, aggressive and conservative are completely opposite ends of the spectrum. There, probably want to talk to your advisor and work out what your goals are and when to switch it down. But yes, at some point you would want to switch, however much you need, down to a more defensive or conservative fund if you're going coming from aggressive. Mm. It can be hard to differentiate between defensive um, uh, right up to aggressive in the last year or two. Absolutely. COVID has been very fascinating to watch. Um, but just remember that if you, as long as you didn't withdraw your funds and you didn't lose money along the way, you just lost value. Excellent. Um, lots of questions in there. I, I don't think I'll be able to get through all of those. Let's move on to the next slide here. So how to pick the best KiwiSaver fund. There have been a lot of talk about fees. So the, the fund type can generally be determined by two things. So how soon you need the money and how comfortable you are with the ups and downs of the market um, that's to come. So depending on how you feel and how much time you have will depend on what sort of fund type works for you primarily. The next thing to think about are fees. And fund managers charge a wide range of fees in different ways for managing our investments. It literally pays to have a look at what fees come with your fund, and this choice could make a difference of tens of thousands of dollars to your return on KiwiSaver. So the Sorted website has a great tool that you can use to actually check fees as well, and you can sort the different fund types by fee type as well, so you can see are the fees reasonable in your opinion. Fees eat into whatever returns we earn through our fund, so the more we pay in fees, the lower our returns will be. This is one instance where we don't necessarily get what we pay for, and that can be very controversial in the industry. There are two essentially different types of investing philosophies that are out there. You have passive investing and you have active investing, and they come with different fees as well. Passive investing is, it doesn't have a great, great sounding name really, does it? Passive investing. Passive just means more hands off. The fund manager follows the track follows and tracks the performance of a given market, a market index, making decisions to buy and sell based on how the entire market looks at the time. The average before cost performance tends to equal the market average over time. So there are lower fees um, and some of the responses may be a little bit more automated. Active investing sounds great, right? Active, we love to be active. Active aims to outperform the chosen market. They'll have a benchmark, say the S&P 500, and they're typically trying to buy and sell assets they deem undervalued or overvalued. There are higher fees involved because it's a more hands-on approach and there is a lot more to do with the level of research going on there as well. 
We also need to look at what's on offer with the different KiwiSaver providers. You are paying them a fee not just to do the active or passive managing going on there, but also to communicate with you. And they may have other services available as well. These can be really difficult to compare as you would have to call around the different KiwiSaver providers and ask them, so what do you have on offer? But Sorted surveys all the different KiwiSaver providers every six months and ask them about their range of services. And then they give them a star rating. So you can check that one out using the, the Smart Investor tool to, just to see what their star rating is like. And when it comes to returns, so finally, after risk level fees and services, it's time to look at the number that everybody wants to know. How did my fund or how did our fund perform? How much did it earn in future and earn in returns? And how much did our money grow? It's all about the results. But the number that really counts the most is the return after fees and taxes are taken out. This is the net return. And it's best to compare net returns over the longest time period possible. As we know, over the last couple of years, things have been a little bit up and down, a little bit volatile. So if you just looked at that in isolation, you would have a very um, skewed look on investing. So the longer time period you have, the better you have to compare how funds are going and return wise. So the KiwiSaver Fund Finder does allow you to look at returns based on their five-year um, history, if it's been around for five years. But we can't predict how a fund will do in the future, and it's not a good idea to solely look at how a fund has done in the past, which is why it's step number four and not step number one. Research has shown that looking at, a, at performance on its own is not a great way to choose a fund, since often and this is what saying, might sound really weird, but often the top performer for one period can get a really low result in the next. And there, we just don't have a crystal ball. So you can't just pick a fund that has had the best returns lately. But we can't help ourselves. We will look at returns. Just like when we're driving our car, we do have to check the rear vision mirror from time to time. But at the end of the day, we need to focus on moving forward. So focus on the future and keep moving forward with that. No one can pick a fund for you, but all you can do is make an informed decision based on the information that's available. So returns are step number four. Consider steps one, two, and three before you get to that point. The KiwiSaver Fund Finder is a great tool for you to have a look at um, to see what type of fund might suit you. So let's have a quick look there. And just quick, I'll quickly show you about how to use this fund. It's a very simple one. Um, not too many questions there. So if I don't know what type of fund is good for me, we can have a look there. How old are you? Let's go with the 30 year old. I'll be 30 today. And how much are you earning? I'm just putting in what we talked about earlier. When do I want to use my money? Well, I'm 30, so I want to use it in 10 years or more. And over a year, how comfortable am I with any ups and downs in my money? Mm. Well, let's say I'm only happy with that. The most important thing, thing to me when investing in KiwiSaver is getting back at least as much, um, certainly ending up with more. I want higher returns over the long term, even if it means the big ups and downs. I'm going to gonna click that one today. Sounds like you're looking for a growth fund. So there we go. It gives you an idea of what sort of fund type might work for you. If you're not sure, you can change it again from here and it will follow through and take you through to the KiwiSaver calculator. So it's a really easy tool for you to have a look at just to see if your fund type is aligned with where you're currently at. So the fund finder is an is a easy place to start just to check your fund type. But if you want a, even more comprehensive information, if you're into all that detail, um, such as individual investments in a given fund, then the Smart Investor tool is the place to go. That's the tool that's been designed by Sorted along with the Financial Markets Authority. And so it has a bunch of different categories about managed funds, also shares and bonds and your KiwiSaver. So it goes beyond KiwiSaver and I quite like that tool. We don't have the time to look at the Smart Investor on this session, so I'd highly recommend you take note to go have a look at that one later on. So it's just on uh, the Sorted website there, um, easy enough to find. You can find more information about the fund types if you want to read a bit more of a guide. The Sorted has the My Fund Type Guide. We'll take you through those questions a bit more in detail. But also if you want to find out more about what fund type suits you, there's a really good blog as well. So KiwiSaver, which fund suits 
um, is a good one worth reading for sure. Alrighty. Let's have a quick um, look through the questions and see if there's anything I'm missing here. There's a lot of questions. Maybe we'll come back to that at the end because I think I'll have time to look at those ones. So when you find your new fund, once you've done all your research and you've had a look to see what type of fund you're in, you might decide you need to switch. And it is really easy to change your to switch your fund, either to another fund with your existing provider or to another provider entirely. If it is with your current provider, you may even be able to switch online. In fact, sometimes it seems a little bit too easy to do that, in my opinion, um, but you can, you can switch online. If you're joining another KiwiSaver provider, then you contact them directly. You will have some application forms to fill out. There will be some anti-money laundering documentation to complete. You'll need to do your identification, um, your bank account, all that sort of stuff. But they will do most of that heavy lifting for you in order to give, get everything in order. That new KiwiSaver provider will tell the Inland Revenue about the change and will arrange for your funds to be transferred. It typically takes between 10 to 35 days for that to happen. In the meantime, your current KiwiSaver will be sold down. There'll be some final fees and taxes to pay for the month or year end to date. But within a few weeks, your money will be flowing through to your new fund, your new assets will be bought, and your new KiwiSaver fund will be established. So that's a, it's actually really simple to happen. In a way, over COVID, it was a little too simple because there was a lot of switching going on and not a lot of change going back once those switches had been made. So there's a question here on the slide, and I pondered over this one because it is a loaded question. Is, so is it time to switch? And so I thought about it. If you're switching providers but staying with the same fund type, then you're still in the same market by most accounts. So the timing is less crucial. So if you're staying with switching providers but staying in the same fund type, then you're basically in the same market. If you're switching funds, so changing from, say, defend, uh, from growth to balanced or within that sort of range there, be less concerned with, if you're switching funds, be less concerned with why. It's preferable, oh, sorry, be more concerned with why. It's preferable to switch based on your goals, your time frame, and your objectives, and for it not to be a reaction to fear or the news that you may have seen recently which I'm not saying the news is bad at the moment. I'm thinking more about over COVID. There was a lot of news around this sort of um, topic. So if you're switching funds, be concerned with why you're switching funds. So from defensive to conservative, balanced, growth, aggressive. It's preferable that your switch is based on your goals, your time frame, and your objectives and not be a reaction to fear. I saw a really good analogy with this one, and it's based on sporting teams. So it's not mine. I can't think where I read it now, but it really worked for me. Switching fund managers is like changing your sports team. Same game, different team, different manager, hoping for a better result, a better performance. Switching fund types is like changing position within that team, say from attack to defense or vice versa. You're hoping you'll do better as a reinvented player with different skills. So hopefully that's helpful for you guys as it was for me. The markets go up and down. And this is a really good illustration of what would happen if we contribute regularly to our KiwiSaver, but don't panic. We may see peaks and troughs over time, but we harness the market for greater growth. That purple line there that you see, the one that's going the highest up, um, that's showing investing $10,000 at the start, adding $50 per week, and it grows to $121,100. So it's got a good amount of growth there. The orange line is showing what would happen if you took that same $10,000 for 25 years and just um, and just left it there as a lump sum. It would grow, but much less. It only grows to $21,170. And these figures, again, have been adjusted for fees, taxes, and inflation. The different colors, wedges of colors there is showing the 90% probability of these results. So there is a range. There's the lower end of the range and there's the upper end of the range that we're hoping for um, there as well. But it just shows what would happen if you invest and what is possible um, for you. And the ups and downs are normal. How closely should we be watching our KiwiSaver Saver accounts? You might have it as an app on your phone and maybe you look at it often. 
that can be fine if that's okay if that fits your personality if you're more of a set and forget sort of personality then that can work as well but maybe put a reminder in your calendar to have a look at it every couple of years whatever suits you depending on your age and stage and what things are coming up how you felt over COVID will be a really good indicator with how you felt about volatility. Were you constantly looking at your at your app to see where, what your funds were up to? Or did you sit there comfortably going, yep, it's just doing what it's meant to do and it will be okay because I still have 20, 30 years time before I need the money. So how you felt over COVID will be a really good indicator to how you feel about risk. With KiwiSaver being a managed fund that's invested in assets and that's um, such as bonds, shares, property um, yeah, and cash, there will be swings in value that are natural in the market. Sometimes the value of our funds will fall in the short term and other times we'll do really, really well. We love it when we do well. We're a little concerned when things don't look so great. Looking at a falling balance can be disconcerting, and it was over COVID, that's for sure. And it's normal to want to flee or to react um, and move to less volatile investments. But if we have a long period of time before we need to use the money, so more than a decade, then we have time to ride out the ups and downs and take advantage of the highest growth that is to come. If we panic and pull out our money into less risky types of KiwiSaver funds, we may be walking away from that high growth potential and, and locking in our losses, which was what we heard a lot of uh, as a result of COVID. When our money is going into the funds regularly, so every week we're putting in a certain amount of money, then we're actually still buying assets at cheap prices when the market is down. So when it's ready to bounce back, you've bought more. It's almost like buying shares on sale. So you're still buying them, but at a lower value with the potential for them to grow in the future. So while we need to stay connected with what's happening with our KiwiSaver accounts, it's probably better not to be watching them too, too closely in case we have the urge to run when things get a little bit rocky. Now, I don't know if my colleague Jared's on the line today, but he has a saying which says, resist the itch to switch. So resist the itch to switch. And I think that's really key. So if you're if, if that's a, a hard thing to resist, don't look so often. Maybe take the app off your phone and make it so that you can have a look at it online instead. So we've covered an awful lot of ground today. Essentially, we have looked at some good uses for KiwiSaver. We have looked at how KiwiSaver is built up with the four different inflows of money. So that's us, our employer, the government, and then the growth that comes from being in a, a fund like KiwiSaver. We looked at how time is key and crucial. We looked at how to choose a KiwiSaver fund that suits us based on our, our time frame and our risk. And we also looked at how we might cope with the roller coaster that can be investing. There are some great calculators out there for you to use. The KiwiSaver calculator, the KiwiSaver fund finder. And if in doubt, head to Sorted and look at the different guides that are available for us. That buying your first home guide is really useful as well as understanding the different types of funds that are out there for you. If you need some one-to-one -one help, there is help out there. So if, you, if you're looking for budgeting help, some general um, general advice, then Money Talks New Zealand is a great resource for you, for you to use. It's part of FinCap, which is a group of about 200 different budget advice agencies around New Zealand. Their phone number is 0800 345 123, 0800 345 123. If you are part of an employee assistance program, then you may be able to receive some financial mentoring through your employee assistance program. Alongside counselling, then financial mentoring can be available there as well, but they can only give you the general advice. If you're looking for something a little bit more specific, then you can maybe talk to your KiwiSaver provider. They can help you with their funds and only their products. If you want to find out more about KiwiSaver funds in general, then you could talk to a financial advisor. To find out what funds that, that KiwiSaver that a financial advisor can help you with, you need to check their publicly available information to see who they work with. So if they don't work with the providers that you want information about, find another financial advisor. Money Hub has a great list of financial advisors that you can look at. Um, that's a list created by Mary Holmes and Money Hub. Otherwise, the best place to go is Financial Advice New Zealand, which has a directory of members and you can search by region and you can search by the type of advice that you are after as well. And then finally, Kainga Order is the website to go to for any information around first home ownership. 
So before you all leave me, I can see people are already leaving and that's understandable because we're now one minute over. What is one thing you're going to do as a result of today to improve your KiwiSaver? Hop into the chat and just let me know. What is one thing you're going to do? Maybe it's just bump up your KiwiSaver contribution and that's not a just thing. That's an amazing thing that you can do to help improve your retirement situation. I'm going to let you guys hop into them. And so if you need to head off, Thank you so much for joining us um, today, but not just today, for all the other sessions that we've had over this month. It's been amazing. And feel free to use these resources um, by hopping onto the YouTube account and finding it later on as well. I'm going to end the recording now and have a look at what other questions that you guys have.